Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondon and I'm the author of Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love, available in paperback, Kindle, and Audible books. And if you've read this book already, please do leave a review on Amazon. It helps to get the book more exposure and to expose more twin flames to reading the book and understanding this twin flame journey. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on that bell, scroll up to all for all notifications, and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do readings. I do personal readings, twin flame romance, life path and purpose. You can book that at my website fondenwellness.com. This is the Twin Flame Tarot Reading Week starting today, Monday, June 1st, 2020 for the entire week. How have you guys been? I'm going to put the timestamp below for the beginning of the reading because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I like to do my musings for the week if I feel like you guys need a little pep talk for the upcoming week. So I am just going to start with that. I'm not going to go into the reading right away. Therefore, go ahead. If you just want the reading, click on that timestamp below. This is the first week in June, you guys. Oh my gosh. I can't even believe it. Where has the time gone? This is an insane time. This is a crazy time. I believe 2020 will go down in history as one of the most bizarre years in the past 100 years, in all honesty. And just so many crazy things are happening right now. I'm actually going to produce a video on Anchoring the Light Part 2. <laughs> Because in the beginning of quarantine, I believe the video was posted around March 13th or 14th because I did a live stream. And I'm not certain of the date, so don't quote me on that, but you can go back and look at my video entitled Anchor the Light in order to really get my take on everything and also to help you to anchor your own light. And there's also, in that video, which I believe it was a recorded live stream, in that video there is also a guided meditation that I do, and I believe somebody actually posted the timestamp for the guided meditation within the confines of that live stream. So live, live stream videos are a little bit more spontaneous <laughs> and uh, not always very sequential in nature, but I did give a little speech on anchoring the light, and I really feel that Yes, this is like two and a half months later. However, I believe it's time for that again. It's really time for that perspective of actually anchoring the light and one of our jobs as twin flames, as light workers, is to actually anchor the light. And I really want to focus on that. I want to focus on individuals, like individually getting out of our egos and moving into our spiritual selves. And in fact, that is what my upcoming book is all about. So I have an upcoming book. It's slow coming just because I had a few delays within the quarantine. It's almost ready for production within the next week or so. But along with that is the recording for the audible copy, the audible version, which tends to have like a two to three week delay anyway, because audible needs to check the audio files and all that jazz. But the paperback, if you guys want a signed copy of the paperback, and I will have, I'm hoping I will have the cover image to show you guys within a week but I will have links up to pre-order my new book and you can get author signed copies. It's one of the only times I do it with book launch. Book launch, I tend to do author signed copies because I order a bunch of copies from Amazon first through my author page on Amazon. So that's like on the back end that you guys don't see. So I'm able to order in bulk <laughs> and then I sign all the copies off and I send them off 
as that initial mailing to launch the book. So if you guys are actually interested in buying a preview copy, not really a preview copy, but one of the first copies of, it's called Heal Yourself, The Return to Wholeness, then look out within the next few days. I'm hoping to have some links up that are gonna link directly to my website. And the links will link you to PayPal. What I have found is that it's really for me, since I don't have a regular um, store on my website, but linking it to PayPal is really the best way that I can grab your information so that I have things like your address to send you the book. <laughs> and you can also put in notes to say like who you want the book signed to and all of that jazz. That's upcoming, that's super duper exciting, but really my, my book on the return to wholeness is really that shifting from ego to spirit. Now it, it involves a lot of other things as well on your own healing journey, but that's the main crux of the actual book. And I really believe that individually, we need to learn how to move from ego to spirit. And it's easy to point the finger and it's easy to blame other sources, other people, people creating violence, people creating negativity. It's very easy to look outside of ourselves and point the finger outside. But what we truly need to do as twin flames and as light workers is point the finger back on the inside in saying, where does that anger sit in me? Where does the fear sit in me on any issue? It doesn't matter. It could be very, very personal or it could be about world events. Individually, if we are not continually anchoring the light and anchoring unconditional love versus like living in fear, then we are not doing our jobs individually because it is the collective consciousness that helps to either raise or lower the general consciousness. So if enough individuals are anchoring the light, if enough individuals are living in peace and peacefulness within themselves on all levels, not just a few select ones, but on all levels, then as we reach critical mass, then it's going to then raise the universal consciousness. So that's kind of where we're working at here. And I know it sounds, it sounds like, it almost sounds like in a way like, oh, who am I to make a difference? Like I'm just one person. I can't make a difference, but that's completely untrue. You can make a difference as one person because if 2000 people are watching this video and 2000 people watching this video start to do that work, toward anchoring the light, then you're going to have an effect, a direct effect on the people in your immediate circle. So let's suppose that you have a direct effect on, let's be super conservative, on five people, then that's 2,000 people times five, so that's 10,000 people already just through one video, as an example, that are beginning to raise the consciousness. So it's just, Yes, you are one individual, but it's not about the one individual. It's about you anchoring that light so that all the people around you in your immediate circle can then see the peacefulness and love within you and they will be compelled to do the same. So that's, that's my little speech for today. And again, I know the world is crazy right now and it looks crazy right now, but the more you can stay grounded in yourself, the more you can stay grounded in your meditation, prayers, peacefulness, and just being kind. And if that means you need to stay 100% away from social media, so be it. Like in all honesty, I have pulled away big time from social media. I've pulled away big time, even from reading a lot of the comments on YouTube. And in fact, I have to monitor them in some way because there's so much negativity out in that as soon as I see something negative, I'm pulling that comment, I'm reporting the user, because there's been a lot of hate speech that's been going around too. What I do is I, like YouTube is really good about that now, like you can pull comments, you can report comments if there's bullying, hate speech, harassment, all of that, because I do not want any of that going around at all, not on my channel. So I do have to monitor a little bit because of that. And like, if there's a user that is having a negative attitude, bad behavior, that's going to affect others. And inevitably I'm pulling those comments and I'm blocking the user. I am trying to be as proactive as I can on my platform as far as my channel goes. 
But if, if you need to take, if, if you find that it's really hard to be kind in these days because there's so much negativity going around, then I would say take a break from news, take a break from social media, take a break from all of that stuff. Like, it's not worth it. It's not worth it if it brings you away from your sense of peace. To that end, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started on the energetic read for this week for Twin Flames, Divine Feminine, Divine Masculine, and the couple. And as usual, we are going to start with the goddesses, the Divine Feminines in this collective. So I'm going to say a prayer over the cards, dear God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Mother Mary, Archangels, Angels of God, Divine Feminines, Guardian Angels, Twin Flame Angels, Romance Angels, please let this reading be of the highest light and love of God the Father. Let it bring light, love, and truth to everyone involved. Archangel Michael, please stand guard, casting away any lower energies with your sword of light. What do Divine Feminines need to learn this week? What is their journey for this week, the first week in June? Starting today, Monday, June 1st, 2020, Divine Feminines, where are they in their journey? Okay, and we are using this week, the second deck always changes. This week we're using the Fairy Tarot. Again, beautiful imagery, beautiful messages. I think we can use a little bit of positivity this week. We can use a little uplifting beauty and positivity this week. So for Divine Feminines, Angels, Archangels, Guardian Angels, what do they need to learn? And let's go to Divine Masculines too. Divine Masculine Twin Flames. Divine Masculines Guardian Angels. Please guide us into what Divine Masculines are learning and growing this week. What the energy is with their Divine Feminines and the couple. Okay, and we are going to the Fairy Tarot deck for Divine Masculines. Divine Masculine Energy. Angels. Divine. We are going to the twin flame couple now. Twin flame couple energetically together. This twin flame couple in this collective. Merging energies. And we are going to the fairy tarot deck. Excellent. Let's go ahead now and move on to the romance energy. We're gonna pick one romance card for the romance energy for this week for the twin flame couple. Awesome. Let's go to the messages of love. This message is either going to enhance the romance card or it's going to change the meaning a slight bit. I just had to move these candles. And I can't wait till some of the more spiritual shops are able to open up because I really want to get some nice chakra candles and, you know, support some of the local businesses here in Southern California. Twin flame couple, excellent. Now these are messages from divine masculine to divine feminine. If the Divine Masculines could say anything today or this week <laughs> to their Divine Feminines, this is mostly, of course, for those of you that are still in separation, but also those of you that have Divine Masculines that are a little bit more timid with their feelings, not really revealing so much. Awesome. We got one that fell. We'll take it. Let's start with Divine Feminines. We've got the five of earth. My goodness, my goodness, divine feminines. A lot of worry. Um, we kind of saw a little bit of that worry last week. So we've got the five of earth, which is concerns about money and finances. I understand we are into week, I don't know what it is, week 11, week 12 of quarantine. Some things are opening back up. Some people are back to work and some people are not back to work. This is instability. This is financial instability. Worry about money, finances, home, Stability in the home. This is fear, fear surrounding money, fear surrounding finances, fear surrounding stability in the home. It's also the refusal to ask for help when you need it. It's almost like being too proud of asking for help. And also if you are self-employed, it's about this uncertain self-employment and 
For those of you that own your own businesses, I feel for you guys. I used to own a yoga studio, I had a, a brick and mortar establishment. And while the economy was relatively okay, because I started in a recession, I started my yoga studio in 2008, which was in a recession. But you know, gradually things did get better in the world. And even with the economy being okay, it was still a struggle financially to keep open a yoga studio. So I really feel for you guys that have been forced to close your businesses for the past two and a half months. It's not easy. It's really not easy and I understand that. You're doing a little housekeeping now. So we've got this, but this is the queen of air energy, the queen of winter energy. And we saw this a lot for divine masculines, but the divine feminines, it seems like you guys are starting to like clean house, if you will. And this is getting rid of clutter. It's doing feng shui, doing some spring cleaning or summer cleaning. We're almost to the summer, but it's also honestly about getting rid of the people that you no longer need in your life. Now, in all honesty, I believe, I truly believe that this past two and a half months has really caused all of us to do a lot of deep reflection about what we want in our life, what we don't want in our life, the people that we want in our life, the people that we don't want in our life. And we have been in this deep reflection mode on like purging out what is it that I don't need in my life. Many of you have realized that you can live with a lot less things when we're talking about material goods. You've realized that, gosh, why was I keeping all this clutter? Maybe, you know, just because you've been quarantined in your home that you're like, why, why did I live with all this garbage all this time? Like, I really didn't need it. I don't need it now. And I'm feeling it having to stay home with all this stuff. So there's a lot of that going on. I believe that you have been exploring because of this five of earth energy, You've been exploring on how to be smarter with your money, how to budget better, and, and also get rid of stuff. So I kind of feel like you are going through this transformation financially for yourself. And maybe, you know, also thinking about healing your finances. And it's more like, I need to get rid of certain things. I need to get rid of certain people who are creating drama. It's a good, you know, it's a good purging energy there's a little bit of that worry though about, again, about finances. There's a little bit of that worry about, I don't know if I can make it financially and it has actually detracted you in a way from your twin flame. And in a way, <laughs> in a way, I believe that's kind of good. I feel that your distraction of redoing the finances, redoing the budget, getting rid of clutter, getting rid of people, like all of these things that have been on your mind is a distraction away from your twin flame. And in a way that is good because it is taking the pressure off of that divine masculine temporarily, you know, and that's kind of what was needed is for you to take the pressure off of them since there was so much pressure on the divine masculine. Now for the Divine Masculines, it's, it's super duper interesting because we are moving from, well, okay, they've been thinking, honestly, the Divine Masculines have been thinking about their Divine Feminines because this is the High Priestess. And, you know, even though it's the High Priestess and it's not like a goddess energy, so to speak, but many divine masculines have considered that their divine feminines are these light workers or these high priestess in energy where it's almost like if they looked up to you divine feminines as being the guiding light in order to help them pull through spiritually and help them pull through some of their problems and issues and also the connection that they have with you that is rather intuitive in nature and these psychic insights and getting over their fears and getting over their obstacles and all of that, they really did look to you as the guiding light throughout this entire time. And I believe that they're, they've been deeply thinking about you and dreaming about you and having psychic um, abilities open when it comes to the divine feminines and they have learned throughout this time to face their own fears. 
And I believe that um, it's interesting, but I believe that there's going to be a full moon in Sagittarius on June 5th. There is an eclipse on that day, the first of three for the next five weeks. And I believe that after that eclipse, after the, the full moon on the 5th, there's going to be a propensity toward communication with their divine feminines for many of them. And because we got the Prince of Winter, which is like the swords, Prince of Swords, which does indicate like brilliant ideas, communication, coming forward, coming forward quickly. But it can also be like, I need to make a decision. It's time. I need to consider all my choices and options and make a decision when it comes to this and moving forward. And how am I going to move forward? And how am I going to communicate swiftly? I believe that this thought process of their divine feminines, along with that lightning speed energy of moving toward, I believe right after the full moon, there's going to be some of this. What is the deal with the winter cards? Oh my goodness. Wow. There is going to be this moving forward energy as far as communication goes. So it's, so I used, it's interesting because I used the fairy tarot deck, this one, for the secondary cards for all three. So for divine feminines, divine masculines, and the couple. And it, it's interesting because we got three winter cards, which are the swords. So we've got the Queen of Winter, the Prince of Winter, and then we've got the Eight of Winter for the couple, which is kind of interesting. I don't know. Let's 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 decode what's happening here. We've also got with the Angel Tarot deck for the three, you know, the masculine, feminine, and the couple. We've got two major arcanas. So we've got the Hermit card, which I believe. This is not like everybody's still in, like the couple, you guys are still in hermit energy, so to speak. But I believe that it's the point of enlightenment. This is what we're talking about anchoring the light because, and for those of you that didn't see the first few minutes of the video because you went directly to the reading, on Wednesday, I'm gonna post a video on anchoring the light part two, which th that's kind of the beginning of the video, what I was talking about. But this is really the Hermit Archangel Raziel. This is about anchoring the light, literally, literally in this case, for the whole couple, the couple. And this is why individually it's so important that you do this because the Hermit, okay, we can look at the Hermit in two ways. We can look at it as going into your cave and meditating and contemplating and doing quiet reflection, or we can look at it as being the mentor as being the leader, the mentor. Because in this imagery, the hermit is actually walking up to the top of the hill to mentor his students. And he is holding the lantern and the students are following. So this is about anchoring the light and being that mentor or leader for the collective, for the collectivity and not being afraid because we see this eight of winter. The eight of winter is about being afraid, but it's unjustified fear. It's almost like I can't move out, I can't move up, I can't move forward because I don't have the self-confidence, I don't have the knowledge, I don't have the education, I don't have the wherewithal, but you do, you do. By virtue of the fact that you are a twin flame, by virtue of the fact that you are a light worker, you do have it. You just, you have to walk with faith. You have to walk by faith first. Even if you feel trapped, if you feel, because this is a card of like feeling trapped, but you're not really trapped. And I feel like this is how you get there. This is how you get to your twin flame couplehood. This is how you anchor the light that's how you do it so I really believe that um, in Archangel Raziel as I have mentioned before is the Archangel that helps you to work with and work out your past lives and look what we got for the romance card we've got past life relationship and then we got integrity. 
so one thing that I really, I want to hit home this week, especially guys, what I really super duper want to hit home is that you are a light worker. You have been preparing for this for lifetimes. You have been preparing for this journey for lifetimes. Stay in your integrity. Don't get caught up in your ego at all. You or divine masculines, don't get caught up in the ego. If your divine masculine comes back to you, divine feminines in ego, or if divine feminines, you go to your divine masculines with your ego, you are not staying in integrity. Part of um, this whole period of staying away from fear, moving toward enlightenment, anchoring the light, being the mentor and the leader in the light rather than following the crowd, let the crowd follow you instead. It's all about your values, your morals, your integrity, and what you know, what you know is the right thing. It doesn't matter what the news says. It doesn't matter what social media says. It doesn't matter what your friends say. It doesn't matter what your family says. It's about you having your inner knowing and you trusting in that inner knowing. That's what this is about. It's about you stepping into that light and stepping into that role of living in high integrity and staying out of fear. So I, I love this because I have gone this a lot for Divine Masculines. The first one is I knew exactly what I was doing. On many, 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 many levels, the Divine Masculine knew when they separated from you, they knew why, but they didn't, they couldn't articulate it. They knew that you were in pain. They knew you had a lot of things to heal. They knew that you, that they had a lot of things to heal. And they're saying, I hope you can forgive me one day. I hope you for, can forgive me one day for walking away and doing what they did. They're really wanting you to forgive them. They're hoping and praying that you will forgive them. They know in many cases, they know they were wrong. They know they didn't handle the situation well. They know that the ghosting was wrong. They know that the turning their back on love was wrong, but they kind of had to do it. If they hadn't done it, then the divine feminines would not have learned the lessons that they needed to learn. So they had to do it, but many of them just didn't handle it in the right way. They couldn't articulate it. That is the biggest issue is they could not articulate the why. And it was a lot of it was subconscious. A lot of it was based on past life stuff, past karma that you both had to work out. And that's something that if you're not too keen or aware on what was happening with that, with the past life stuff, it's really, really hard to articulate. So, and you, that energy was pushing them away. The divine feminine energy was pushing them away. The energy of the obsession was pushing them away. But now really it looks like the way is by both of you stepping into your light as light workers, both of you stepping into your light as anchoring that light, and both of you moving into the leadership role where you become the leader now. It's not like you're subservient to those in your life anymore. It's not as if you have to cower away and bow down out of society because you extend beyond the norm and you're weird or you're like people are saying like you're crazy, you're obsessed, you're weird because of this twin flame connection that it's not real. And we are all past that now. We are actually to the point where we know this is real, we know it's necessary, we know it's past life stuff, we know that we have a soul contract to move forward, we know we need to anchor the light, we know we need to live in unconditional love, and now is the time to step up and believe it, and have that self-confidence, and not cower away and say like, oh, I, I just need to keep under the radar. So what does that look like for your life? I don't know. Everybody is very different. The way they express their leadership in anchoring the light is very, very different. So that's something I hope that you guys can explore this week um, in that deep reflection and that meditation, but also taking a stance peacefully on anchoring your own light. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications, and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for sharing this video. 
with other twin flames. And thank you so much for supporting this channel. Again, if you have not yet picked up your copy of Twin Flame Romance or left a review for this book, please do, please spread the love. I really, I write a lot about unconditional love and anchoring the light in this book and I really want as many Twin Flames to get this message on anchoring the light and unconditional love as possible. This world needs it more than anything right now. So again, support this book and the message contained within by spreading it as much as you can through your reviews, through purchasing the book, giving it to friends, family, whoever you know is a light worker. And thank you guys so much for all the rest of your support. If you want to pledge on Patreon and get the private party podcast, it's www.patreon.com forward slash Michelle S. Fonten. And I will see you in the next video.